Hey guys, so today I'm going to tell you about radioactive decay, the radioactive decay equation in Half-Life. And I'm going to give you, uh, so first I'm going to give you the theory, then I'm going to give you an exam type question, and then I'm going to I'm going to show you something as well that it may help you, a link that it may help you. In case you're not here for the physics, but you're here for the riddles, um, the answer for this riddle right here is going to come next week. So if you haven't checked it out, do check it out. I'm going to put the link in the description and it's pretty cool so i at least i found it it was hard i i just may be better at reels with numbers i don't know for me it was like a nightmare to get this answer so check it out i'm gonna i'm gonna put the link in the description and then next week you're going to get the answer so share it with share it with other people and see if they can figure out the answer or if they agree with your answer anyway radioactive decay equation and half-life I am assuming here that you know all the, these decay types, okay? So I have the alpha decay, beta decay, the positron emission, electron capture, gamma emission, and spontaneous fission. And I'm assuming that you know what radiation is emitted, the general equation, and the model if I wanted to draw something, okay? So in this video, oh, and this picture is not mine. I got it from here, okay, from this link. So in this video, I'm assuming you know this. However, imagine that you don't know this or you want to recap or you want to revise this or you want to know a little bit better your background information. I'm going to put these four links as well in the description. All of them separately are going to or in total are going to explain each of these decay types, the, the radiation needed, the general equation is going to explain everything. So. If you feel like you are way over your head when you get to this video and you need some background information, here's where you can find it, okay? So this link is going to go into the description as well, okay? So the radioactive decay equation. So the thing is the activity or the decay rate of an isotope or its sample is proportional to the number of parent nuclei that I have, where the parent nuclei is known as n that i have in there okay so that is present now the activity is known as a i saw it as r as well so the activity or the decay rate is proportional to this number okay so that means that if i have more parent nuclei or unstable nuclei i'm gonna have a sample that is more active or that it has a higher decay rate than one where i have less number of parent nuclei present okay so how do I figure this out with the equation? So all these four equations in here that I'm going to explain in a second are going to show number one, this and how the decay rate decreases and how I can figure out the parent nuclei number at a certain time. But um, all of them are, uh, as I told you, all of them are going to help you with this. And I'm going to explain you as well where, where this comes from. So this is all what you need to, or this is all the equations that you need to figure out any radioactive decay equation exercises. Okay, I just got messed up now. Anyway, so explaining these equations, the first equation says that dn over dt is proportional to n. Now, so what I'm saying is the atoms they are decaying per time unit is proportional to n. So n is the number of unstable nuclei. So that means that if I have more unstable nuclei, I'm going to have a faster decay rate. I have more atoms decaying per second, okay? And you will see this in a visual matter when you look at the half-life graph, which is going to come in a couple of slides, if not the next one, okay? So... I know that. Also, I know that minus, and I'll explain the minus in, X, in a second, minus dn over dt happens to be equal to a constant times n. Because if I set here proportional, that means that here is going to be a constant, okay? And that number, so lambda times n, is going to be equal to a, a or r, the rate of decay, the activity, okay, of my sample. So this lambda in here is a constant, is known as the decay constant or the transformation constant, okay? So it tells you what is the constant at which the number of the parent nuclei are going to um, decay, okay? And that over the times, oh my god, over the times, that times the number of parent nuclei that you have is equal to the activity. Now, why is all of this equal to minus dn over dt? Because the number, the activity, the decay rate, the number decreases as the time increases. <coughs> Apologies. So as I told you before, 
if I have a sample with a higher number of parent nuclei, I'm going to have a more active sample because I have more atoms decaying over a certain amount of time or per unit of time. So I need to have a minus in there because as the number of atoms decay and number of the unstable atoms decay, then my activity decreases, okay? Now, if I do simple maths with any of these two formulas, I can get to these ones, okay? And what it say is that N, the number of unstable atoms, is equal to N0, which is the initial number that I had when I decided the time to be zero, okay? Times the exponential of minus lambda t, where this lambda is this lambda, the decay constant, and t is the time in seconds that I'm considering, okay? Now, in the same way, I can say that A, the activity of a sample at a certain time, t, is equal to the initial activity, okay, times the exponential of minus lambda t, and again, this lambda is the decay constant, okay? So, Knowing this formula is super important and is going to help you a lot in any radioactive decay exercise, okay? And as I told you, I do have an exercise for you uh, in a couple of slides for you to see this in action, okay? Now, what is half-life? The half-life of a radioactive substance is the time taken for half of the unstable nuclei or parent nuclei to decay, okay? Now, this is the curve. I got it from this link in here. And I have here, I start with the number A. So a certain number A for the radioactivity. You could have here the N number or the activity, whatever you wanted, okay? The half-life curve is going to have the same shape. So this is the initial number. After a certain time, T one half, which is how I'm going to uh, symbolize the half-life time, I'm going to have that number to decrease to A over 2, okay? If I wait another half-life, so exactly the same time, t1 over 2, this number is going to decrease by a half, because that's what it says. That's the definition of half-life. So if I have a over 2 divided by 2, I end up having a over 4. So that is the number that I get. And guess what? If I wait again for a time t1 over 2, I'm going to have this number halved. So a over 4 divided by 2 happens to be A over 8. So this number decreases from A over 4 to A over 8, which happens to be 1 8 of the initial number because I had three half-lives. Now, if you want to figure out the number or how quickly something decays or in terms of how many half-lives, what is the initial number comparing to the number that you had at the moment, you can use this formula right here, which I explained to you in another video as well, which says that the radioactivity or the number of parent nuclei or the activity after a certain n number of half-lives is going to simply be equal to the initial value divided by 2 to the power of n, where n, again, is the number of half-lives you already had, okay, or the number of half-lives of the exercise, okay? So, a, the initial number, over 2, because this is how many times you keep dividing by 2. So, if I say that my number n is 3, so I had 3 half-lives, like 1, 2, 3, I have a over 2 to the power of 3. 2 to the power of 3 happens to be 8, so a over 8. And I already know what number I would have without having to divide by 2, by 2, by 2, the number of half-lives that I had, okay? So the half-life curve illustrates that that the number of nuclei halves whenever the time t increases by one half, okay? So this is the curve for whatever you have in your sample, okay? It doesn't matter what it is. The only difference is these numbers change and these numbers change. But all the curves have the same shape, okay? Now, how can I put this half-life in the equation? So this is the equation. I actually got it. I was too lazy to write it, to type it down. So I just got it, a picture from the internet. I just went to Google Images, half-life equation, and I just put it in here, okay? So T1 half, which is the radioactive half-life, is equal to ln of 2 over lambda, where lambda again is the radioactive decay constant. Just this one that we had in here, okay, is the same thing, all right? So this is roughly 
0 0.693, so ln of 2 is 0 0.693 more or less, divided by lambda, and this is roughly, or this is the same as saying actually, 0 0.693. 693 times this symbol that I cannot remember the name right now, the name of this Greek letter, but this symbol is the mean lifetime. So that means that the mean lifetime is 1 over the radioactive decay constant, okay? So with this formula, you can figure out either the mean lifetime or the radioactive decay constant or the half-life. And this formula tends to come together with these formulas as well. So when you have a question, it's going to be rare that you don't have to use the two of them unless it's a very simple, straightforward question, okay? Now, remember, each isotope has a specific half-life. So although the shape of the graph is more or less the same for whichever isotope you have and the same thing happens, I mean, I cannot predict when a specific parent nuclei is going to decay, but I can predict that after a half-life, half of the initial value that I had in there decayed already, okay? So although this happens for whatever sample I have in there, each isotope has a specific, a different number for the half-life. So for the time for the activity to decrease by half, okay? Now, it depends. So uranium is like about 4 billion. I believe it's 12 nitrogen is going to be like less than a second, less than even half of a second. So again, it does depend on the sample. But again, the formula is the same. The way of thinking about the exercise is the same. Okay. And just to show you that I have here an exam type question that says, Radium's most stable isotope, radium-226, has a half-life of about 1,620 years. Calculate the activity of 1 gram sample of radium-226 and then they say determine the time needed for the activity of the sample to be reduced to 1 over 8 of its initial value. So I'm going to answer these questions for you and that way you can see how, you, how it's done in case you want to recap or something. If you do not want to see the answer right now and you want to try it first, please pause the video because I am going to move on and show you the answers now and then you can play it back. So going to the answers. First thing that I did was the equations that you see in there are the ones that I'm going to use. So I know that activity is equal to lambda times n. I know that n equals to small n, so the number of moles times n a, the Avogadro's number. And I know that the number of moles equals to small n, so lowercase m over capital M. So the mass over the molar mass. Okay. So the time for the half-life is 1,620 years. So first, I'm going to put that into seconds. So I'm going to multiply it by 365, the number of days I have in a year, then multiply it by 24, which is the uh, number of hours I have in a day, times 60 minutes that I have in a day, times 60 seconds. So this gives me 5.109 times 10 to the power of 10 seconds, okay? Then I'm going to figure out what is the decay rate. So lambda is equal to ln over of 2 over t1 half, where t1 half is the time of a half-life. So you saw the formula. It was just this two the other way around. So I'm just figuring out the decay rate in here, okay? So that's going to be equal or roughly equal, actually, to uh, 0 0.693 divided by, and I put it here, the time, the half-life time in seconds, okay? And this gives me 1.356 times 10 to the power of minus 11 second minus 1. So the decay rate, this number, the radioactive decay rate has times or, or units, sorry, of time minus 1, okay? Now, the molar mass of radium-226 happens to be 2 to 6 grams per mole, okay? So, I can figure out now the number of moles that I have. So, the number of moles is going to be the mass over the molar mass, so 1 over 2 to 6, which is going to be 4.42 times 10 to the power of minus 3 moles. And then I can figure out the number of particles, uh, which in this case are going to be the number of unstable nuclei that I have in there. So n equals n times na. So I put the number of moles in here. I put the Avogadro's number, which is a constant in here, 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23. And I get that I have 2.66 times 10 to the power of 21 atoms. Okay, so... 
the activity answering the question equals to the decay rate times that number. So I'm going to put the decay rate, which I got it here on the top. So 1.356 times 10 to the power of minus 11 times the number of atoms that I just had in here or that I just determined here 2.66 times 10 to the power of 21 and I get an activity of 3.61 times 10 to the power of 10 BQ where BQ stands for Becquerel and I hope that I said it well Becquerel okay so that's how you answer this first question oh sorry that is calculate the activity of a one gram sample of radium 226 okay now i am going to do the second question which is to determine the time that i need to get to one over eight of the, its initial value okay so pause the video if you want to check anything i'm going to go for the second question so for the second question i'm going to use this formula the activity at a time t equals to the initial activity times the exponential of minus lambda times t as i told you in seconds so what is the number that i had i had they told me one over eight of the initial value so a equals to a zero over eight and this is equal to a zero exponential of minus lambda times t now i can divide both sides of the equation by a zero and i get one over eight equals to exponential of minus lambda t and then if i want to get kind of read of this exponential i need to do the logarithm right so ln of the exponential of this power becomes the power and here i get the ln so ln of 1 over 8 is equal to minus lambda t all that i need to do now is substitute values okay after actually getting t because t i want it to be the subject of my equation so i have this number multiplying t so that means that i'm going to divide both sides by minus lambda so this is going to become t and here i get minus ln 1 over 8 divided by lambda i substitute the value so this value is the calculator they gave me the minus stays in there minus and minus are going to make this a plus and then the lambda is the lambda that I figure out in the previous exercise. So is 1.356 times 10 to the power of minus 11. Okay, so this gives me a time of 1.534 times 10 to the power of 11 seconds. Okay, I'm not done yet. Wait just a second. Uh, what do I want to tell you? Imagine that this is a, an exam and you probably messed up the first question you didn't know imagine how to figure out this lambda and but you do know how to figure out this one just say it in the exam just say suppose or assume that lambda is equal to and you put it a number and what happens is at least you can get marks for the second question because you know you cannot be penalized in the second question because of something that you didn't know on the first question if you know how to do this question and you don't have the number that you would figure out in the previous exercise you can just say i couldn't get that number let's assume that this number is i don't know three and then you would just do the exercise just like that okay so you can do that okay so remember to always show your calculation and remember that getting the first exercise wrong or not knowing the answer for the first exercise doesn't quite determine i mean of course it's better if you get it right but it's not going to be the end of the world you can go there and just say imagine that this number in here that I couldn't calculate in the previous question is equal to four and then you do the calculations you should be able to get full marks but depending on where you are you may not get full marks but at least you shouldn't get zero marks okay now carrying on in here I have the time in seconds but you know although the question doesn't tell me so I'm just going to tell you how you get the time in years as well because these are a lot of seconds right so what do I do to get the time in years I get 1.534 times 10 to the power of 11 seconds and I divide it by 365 times 24 times 60 times 60 seconds minutes hours and days that I have in a year and this gives me about 4,900 years and there you go that's how you answer these two questions in here which are actually exam 
these ones, which are actually exam questions, okay? So pause the video, go back if you need, uh, but hopefully it made sense. Now, as I told you, I was going to give you something at the end, right? Um, as I was doing research to get this video in here, so as I was getting, I don't know, pictures or this or that, I actually don't remember, but it was quite early in the beginning of the video that I found this. There is this amazing link, which I'm also going to put in the description, which is a Half-Life calculator. So you can get the Half-Life or you can get Half-Life, Mean, Lifetime, Decay, Constants, any of these things, okay? You just need to type in the values or the value and the calculator tells you the rest, okay? Now, of course, this is not the way that you are going to get the marks in the exam, but it's great if you want to check a, a result, okay? Imagine that you don't have a mark scheme around, or imagine that you just want to check if everything that you're doing is correct, or you're just inventing some exercises for yourself, and you want to see if they are right, there you go. You can use this calculator, okay? Just to check your answers really quickly. So... That is it for me today, okay, on the radioactive decay equation and Half-Life. I hope it made sense. And I hope you check as well the video, the video of the riddle. And if you're here in this channel just for the riddles, just stay tight because in one week you're going to get the answer for the riddle. So check it out. See if you can figure out the answer. Okay, so up to my next video. Be happy and healthy. Bye.